Hi folks, Mark here. Um, I thought I'd make a video um, about my mental health situation. Uh, so it's going to be a mental health blog. Um, I don't know if uh, anyone's going to watch this, but if anybody is watching and they're going through the same thing as me, maybe I might say something that might help you or encourage you. Um, I've suffered, excuse me, I've suffered with anxiety very severe anxiety for a great part of my life and uh, I've had counselling throughout various times to uh, try and stop the anxiety. I went to my GP about five weeks ago to discuss maybe some counselling. Um, I felt really good, I felt fine but I've still got anxiety sort of in the background and it's, it, it needs seeing too. Um, my GP decided that because I've had anxiety um, throughout my life, he decided to do a more, slightly more in-depth psychological analysis. And I spent an entire hour with my GP. Um, those of you who live in Britain, who uh, go to see your GP, will know that spending an hour with your doctor is incredibly rare. They like to get you in and out quite quickly. <clears throat> So I spent an hour with my GP answering lots of questions um, and he decided there and then to phone the local psychiatric hospital. Um, it's, it's the Prospect Park Psychiatric Hospital here in Reading. And he called somebody up, somebody actually from the crisis care team um, and told me that I was to go home and I'd get a phone call about half an hour after arriving home. From crisis care so I got home the lady from crisis care phoned me she spoke to me on the phone for about 40 minutes asked me some questions about how I was feeling and what was going on and she decided she wanted to see me the very next day um, at the psychiatric hospital so understandably I was a little bit worried because I felt perfectly good um, perfectly fine um, so to be called into a crisis care at a psychiatric hospital when you felt good was a little bit worrying. So I went to the crisis care, answered lots of questions. I was in there for about two hours. Um, and they decided to um, refer me to a psychiatric doctor for a full psychiatric assessment. Um, for those of you that don't know, when you have a psychiatric assessment, you have to be interviewed by two doctors. Um, those two doctors don't meet to discuss you until they've met you separately so they can compare their thoughts. I saw my first uh, first doctor about a week after um, going to hospital for the first time. I spent about 45 minutes with him I suppose and he decided that I am suffering with a dissociative disorder. Um, a dissociative disorder basically is where um, your brain, your, your mind is trying to mask um, you know, bad memories, um, trying to cover them up. Or it can also be, if you're in incredibly unhappy, um, a dissociative or disorder can take the form of your mind is trying to to disassociate yourself with what's going on around you so that you can actually kind of stop being yourself and stop being unhappy and be happier. Um, and of course when he told me that that was that was quite a quite a big thing for me because I felt perfectly fine um, apart from the the anxiety that I've had. Um, but he, he did say that a dissociative disorder takes the form of kind of withdrawing you from the world and withdrawing you from people, um, making you sort of antisocial, making you incredibly introverted. Um, and I know that I have been for many years gradually withdrawing from people and social situations. Social situations um, make me incredibly nervous, incredibly worried. Um, to the point where I don't want to do them and to the point where I've been avoiding social situations, I've been avoiding people. 
Um, I've got friends, very good friends, who over the years have become less and less my good friends because I've been seeing them less and less because I've been pulling away from them. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a shock for me, feeling good and, and fine, uh, and then being told you've got to go to the psychiatric hospital and be assessed, and then being told um, you're not just anxious, you've got a dissociative disorder. But um, part of the dissociative disorder is that you often don't know that you've got it or what effect it's having because obviously your mind is, is trying to cover up problems and worry and stuff. Um, and sometimes, sometimes I feel very much like I'm not myself. Um, I, I spend a great deal of time daydreaming, you know, away somewhere. And again, that's all part of a dissociative disorder. Um, if you if you spend your time daydreaming that you're somebody else or, so, or or you're somewhere else, then your mind isn't focusing on you as a person and what's going on inside. Um, I've also uh, another part of of the disorder is you you kind of become slightly obsessed with things, which I know um, that that is definitely a part of me. Um, about 18 months ago, two years ago, I suddenly became obsessed with buying and listening to records, vinyl records. Um, I bought myself a record player, amplifier, speakers, CD player, record shelves, and lots and lots of records. Um, I spent quite a large amount of money on records. And for quite a while, I was kind of buying these records obsessively. Um, I was buying records that I didn't particularly want. Um, I've bought records that I've never even never even opened. I've taken them out of the boxes and then put them on my shelves and not played them. Um, now I realise that that um, buying those records and, and being very incredibly obsessed with I've got to have records and got to be a part of this kind of record collecting community, I now realise that that's part of the dissociative disorder. Um, so yeah, it's it's all been a bit of a shock for me. I, I went to my GP with some very mild anxiety to dis and I wanted to discuss some help and I come away a couple of weeks later um, being under the care of a crisis care team I should add, actually, I've now been discharged by crisis care. They don't need to see me. Um, yeah, I come away under the care of crisis care. I've been interviewed now by two psychiatric doctors. Um, and they've got together and compared their notes and what they think. But I do have a dissociative disorder with anxiety and with um, sort of obsessive compulsive um, thoughts, feelings, actions, whatever you call it. Compu I guess it's um, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorders. Um, it's all a bit strange because I, I feel fine actually most of the time. But um, yeah, you know, you, you, you have this thing and you know, it's it's a worry to know that you have this. My brain is is trying very its best to kind of tune me out and take me into the whole kind of world of different characters and different personalities to try and cover up what's really going on. Um, so basically, um, at the moment, that's all I really know, apart from the fact that. I'm going to have to have counselling for the anxiety, which is fine. Um, it's going to be a talking therapy. Um, the anxiety isn't the biggest problem. I'm also going to have to have psychotherapy, it looks like, for my dissociative disorder. And that's probably going to take quite a long time. It's probably going to be quite in depth. And from the small amount of research that I've done on the internet, I think it's not going to be very pleasant because my mind is is working very hard to bury bad memories 
um, and things that have happened to me in the past and to 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 cure your dissociative disorder you have to the doctors are going to have to go into my brain and drill down um, not literally obviously I'm talking metaphorically but to drill down to the to the to the root cause of the problem and if the root cause of the problem is bad memories and remembering bad stuff then obviously that's not going to be very pleasant for me um, yeah but all in all um, you know I don't feel too bad I feel I still feel a little confused about everything because I'm not really sure what's going on during the day am I zoning out am I drifting away am I you know um, so yeah that's that's basically my situation um, I'm also uh, the doctors have put me on to antidepressants anti-anxiety medication it's called citalopram I'm taking 20 milligrams I've been taking that for about three weeks and that certainly improved my mood um, when I first went to the psychiatric hospital I was I, I got pretty pretty down and pretty fed up and you know couldn't sleep couldn't eat couldn't think about anything so the citalopram has, has has balanced my moods so I feel better than I did um, so yeah that's my situation um, I've had a full psychological assessment I have a dissociative disorder with anxiety with uh, some OCDs um, and I'm just hoping now that I can get the date uh, for the beginning of my treatment quite quickly because obviously you need to you know if your brain is tuning you out from reality and sending you off to other places obviously you need to get that fixed uh, so yeah that's my basic situation um, I should just add actually I know that nobody from the psychiatric hospital at Prospect Park in Reading will be watching this but I should just add that everybody that I've met um, since I started going to hospital has been absolutely wonderful uh, there's a lot of a lot of headlines all the time in Britain about the National Health Service and it's not very good and it's underfunded and it's understaffed and all that stuff but everybody the crisis care people the staff at the hospital the the doctors that have interviewed me my, even my GP they've all been wonderful I, I couldn't possibly have asked for better people to look after my health so I mean that makes a big difference because I feel very confident that when you've got good people around you that they are going to help me and they are going to fix me because obviously you know this is broken and it needs fixing um, so yeah that's just a quick summation of what's going on with me um, I'm hoping what I'm gonna do is make regular vlogs um, on what's happening with my situation so if you'd if I've said anything in this video that, that has meant anything to you or if you're going through any kind of mental health issues anxiety depression anything um, you know, send uh, put some comments below the video. Um, click like if you like the video, so that I know that I can, if it's popular, I can make some more. Um, please subscribe if you'd like to um, be informed of when I make another one of these videos, which will be shortly. Um, and if you are suffering with mental health issues. I just want you all to know that first of all you're not weak because of mental health issues um, people who are mentally ill tend to be stronger because you tend to try and cope with everything on your own but you're not weak um, you're not on your own either you're not alone there's a huge number of people who have mental health problems so don't don't feel lonely and don't feel bad um, but also, you know, if you are suffering with any kind of mental health problems, go and see your GP. Because I spent many years when I was younger 
with severe anxiety and depression. I didn't see my doctor for a long time and I know that problems that I have today are probably as a result of having these problems for so many years before I saw somebody about it. So if you're suffering with any mental health, go and see your GP. Don't, don't feel embarrassed or sh ashamed about talking about mental health to your GP because that's what they're there for. It's nothing to be embarrassed or ashamed about if you have a mental health issue. See your GP and don't feel like you're alone because there are lots of us out there who have these problems. Okay? And don't think that you're weak. Okay? Or anything like that. Okay? Because you're not weak. You have a problem. Um, you have a problem with your brain and that needs to be sorted. It doesn't make you weak. It's not something you should be embarrassed or ashamed about. Okay, so um, if you have any mental health issues and you'd like to ask me any questions, I'm not an expert, you know. I've lived with mental health issues since I was at primary school. So I'm not an expert and I can't diagnose anything for you. That's your doctor's job. But if you have any issues and would like to ask me anything, please leave a comment below or if you don't want other people to see um, what you're asking me excuse me if you don't want other people to see what you're asking me then just send me a message um, but please if you if you have any problems with your mental health please the worst thing that you can do is do nothing make the call to your doctor get an appointment get the ball rolling you can't deal with mental health issues alone. Um, so there you go, I thought I'd give you a, 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 a summation. I hope this video wasn't too long or too boring. Um, I'm, I hope to make some more, depends if people want to see this kind of thing, so let me know if you do. And I hope that wherever you are in the world, um, you're fit and healthy. And if you're not fit and healthy, I hope you get well soon. So uh, take care everyone and uh, I'll see you again real soon. See ya. Hi folks, Mark here. Um, I thought I'd make a video um, about my mental health situation. Uh, so it's going to be a mental health blog. Um, I don't know if uh, anyone's going to watch this. But if anybody is watching and then stop the anxiety. I went to my GP about five weeks ago to discuss maybe some counselling. Um, I felt really good, I felt fine, but I've still got anxiety sort of in the background and it's, it, it needs seeing too. Um, my GP decided that because I've had anxiety, um, <clears throat> so I spent an hour with my GP answering lots of questions. Um, and he decided there and then to phone the local psychiatric hospital. Um, it's, it's the Prospect Park Psychiatric Hospital here in Reading. And he called somebody up, somebody actually from the crisis care team. They're going through the same thing as me. Maybe I might say something that might help you or encourage you. Um, I've suffered, excuse me, I've suffered with anxiety very severe anxiety for a great part of my life and uh, I've had counselling throughout various times to uh, try throughout my life he decided to do a more slightly more in-depth psychological analysis and I spent an entire hour with my GP um, those of you who live in Britain who uh, go to see your GP will know that spending an hour with your doctor is incredibly rare. They like to get you in and out quite quickly. 